Hello everybody and welcome to another journal with me video. In today's video I am using supplies that I got in the mail from all of my lovely viewers over at my P.O. box um, in the month of July. So I just quickly went through and grabbed a few supplies uh, from the the uh, pretty healthy pile of stuff that was sent in and I just grabbed some um, some smaller bits that I felt like were cohesive and I felt like would be easy to work with and um, some other pieces that I thought would also be a challenge. So everything you are going to see me use on screen came from someone who sent it to me to me to my P.O. box and I will leave all the information down below if you're interested but basically I run a monthly challenge um, where I challenge you to make something pretty and um, take some time for yourself and just enjoy the process of creating and if you like the end result and you need someone or want someone to send it to I would be happy if you sent it to my P.O. box and then if you do send it to my P.O. box I enter you into a monthly giveaway where you will get something sent back from me. So I'm going to answer some questions because I've been working on them very di diligently and I've got a couple good ones that have to do with particularly what I'm working on today. So um, one of the first ones is from Kaylin Amanda and she said she would love to know how I use vintage pieces and how I create layouts. For example, what goes through your brain as you're working on a layout and what's my creative process? The great thing, Kaylin, about um, seeing these videos is you're seeing my entire process. I have no idea um, what I want to do with these pieces. I just gather them. Sometimes I like to gather them before I film. And then once I turn the camera on, it's go time. I don't pre-plan my layouts. You guys are seeing the creative process as it goes. But I do like to start with some pieces that I know work together right away. But for this particular layout, I just grabbed the first four that I could get my hands on and made it work. And I really liked the end result of this particular layout. Um, I really don't have a process. I really just like to grab things that feel cohesive and feel like it could work. Um, another thing that I do is that I try not to be, uh, I try not to put my little clusters in the same spot over and over. I try to be, I, I don't know if creative is the word, but I try to be mindful of um, where I'm laying things out on the page so it's not in the same placement every page. I don't know if that makes sense. I just try to like move my little clusters around, so... I hope that makes sense. Um, another question is, how did I settle on my style and know that was it? Or have I always have had the same aesthetic? Aesthetic. I always struggle with that word. I'm sorry. Um, uh, this particular person always second guesses herself. And so I think I've said this before, but I think it has taken me about six years to kind of get comfortable in the style that I have now. I used to be into very bright colors. Um, I used to be a scrapbooker and I just wanted like Amy Tangerine was my spirit animal <laughs> and then Dear Lizzie was my spirit animal and then it sort of morphed down into Maggie Holmes because she liked she had a more vintage vibe um, and then I just got tired of paying for like look like vintage stuff and I decided to just try to source it um, myself and get the original and then I just got addicted to having old paper <laughs> old paper is my jam I don't know uh, I don't know really really how to explain that or how I got there but that pretty much feels like the natural path to where I, I have gotten to where I am now um, another question which I thought was really, really fun is um, that this particular viewer loved hearing about the first birthday um, themes that I did for Clara and Cullen's second birthday, and I did too. I loved their first birthday parties. Um, my older two boys birthday party themes were really fun as well. Um, but the question is, if I were to throw another first birthday party... Uh, what fantasy theme would I create? And luckily for me, I have four children, so I have plenty of opportunity to play around with birthday themes. Um, but once they get to be about five, they want to choose the theme of their own birthdays. So my time is very limited in choosing the particular theme. But uh, now that I have a little girl, I can go crazy all the time. 
And my husband and I were discussing it the other day, and I believe for Lady Clara's second birthday, we will be doing a mermaid theme um, for anybody who is new here, or maybe even uh, for those of you who have been here for a while. I love mermaids. The Little Mermaid was my movie when I was a little girl. Since I was two years old, I have been obsessed with mermaids, and I have a mermaid tattoo on my back that covers like a quarter of my back. So um, mermaids are definitely my jam. I used to have porcelain mermaids all over my bedroom and my bathroom. And with kids, I sort of had to put that away because I just didn't want anything to get broken. Several of them did get broken. And so now I have to just live vicariously through um, shirts and uh, fun cute little toys with Lady Clara which is totally fine for me but her second birthday will definitely be mermaids haven't figured out how I'm gonna make that like cool and vintage um, or if it's just gonna be like straight like Disney princess I haven't figured it out yet I want to figure it out because if I could do vintage mermaid I would be all over it <laughs> um, but yeah that's what we're gonna do um, Another question is how I organize my stationery and a video tour of that. Um, I have I have filmed a video tour of my office. It's about a year and a half old now. Not much has changed, but a little bit has changed. The setup is basically the same. How I store things is exactly the same. So if you want to see that video, I will leave a link for you to check that out. Um, but yeah, pretty much everything has changed. I just have lots of storage on top of my desk. And I have three desks that kind of loop around the exterior of my office. So I've got a lot of space to work with. Um, another question, I actually have gotten this question quite a bit is um, how I budget for my purchases, how much I spend a month, um, and just basically like the finances of how I fund my habit, <laughs> which I, I definitely call it that. i I, this is a habit for me. Um, but I have an Etsy store, which is how I justify the purchases. Um, and the money that I make from that goes straight back into purchasing more stuff. Um, and before that, I was very, very picky. I had a very small budget, I would say probably less than $30 a month. It's probably still about the same uh, for personal purchases that um, are just for me, just for just for my use. Um, but depending on how much I make in my Etsy store determines how much I spend on bringing new product into my Etsy store. So if you guys want new stuff, you have to buy the old stuff first. No pun intended because it's all old. <laughs> um, another question is how did I um, find, how do I find my vintage ephemera? I filmed um, a vlog kind of it's not really a vlog but it's kind of a vlog of some of the stores that I shop at so it's either already live or will be live very shortly um, that's where I find all my stuff I don't really shop a whole whole lot online sometimes I do sometimes I don't um, at, mostly I just shop at uh, antique malls um, and the other question was how do I find another letter writing society um, the one that I was uh, pushing everybody towards is now closed, but I heard of another one. I think it's like the super secret letter writing society or something. Uh, I will see if I can find any information about that and leave it down below. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I found all my pen pals on Instagram by making pretty mail and posting about it and using hashtags. And that's how I found my pen pals. Um, let's see. I think I answered all of the questions I was going to answer. <laughs> um, I guess I will touch uh, again on the how much I spend a month because I had another one ask. Um, yeah, I, I don't spend a whole lot. Like I said, usually $30 is around my max. Sometimes not even that. Like I haven't spent anything this month so far. I just haven't had the need to bring anything new in. So, um, yeah. Another question is, when you are at a black canvas on those days that we all have, what and where do I find inspiration? Um, Instagram, a lot of the times. Sometimes I just let the materials speak for me, so I just pull my materials like I did right here, um, and I let the materials kind of speak for me. And sometimes I struggle through it, and sometimes I make it work, and that's totally fine. Like this bright yellow tag, struggled with it. These two ledgers that I layered on top of each other, struggled with it. Just wasn't comfortable with it, and I just did it, and it worked. Um, so, 
I think the supplies, you just have to kind of trust the supplies that you have. And if you like the supplies, then you'll like the end result, I think. Uh, another question is, what is my go-to start supply to just grab and create old paper? If you have old paper, book paper, you can layer it with anything, um, anything, just old paper, dictionary paper, ledger paper, receipts, book pages, anything. You can see right here, I have a base layer of old paper with everything and I can always make it work. Text is always really nice, but it works. So I brought it up close so you guys can see the little clusters up close. I hope that you have enjoyed this journal with me. If you have, leave a like, subscribe if you are not already, and I will catch you guys later. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you later. Bye!